All my Gwinnishas out there in Gwinnett land and all of you around the world listen to the sound of my voice. It is a beautiful day here in Gwinnett County. A little overcast, 79 degrees, going up to a high of 86. May It's kind of cloudy, so you know we may have some showers. Hopefully not, but we may because it is kind of cloudy this morning. Hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Listen, you know today is Thursday. Today is my Friday. For you, it's, your, it's still Thursday. For me, it's my Friday because I won't be here tomorrow. But before I go, I got a great guest for you today, um, especially if you're thinking about starting a business and you're looking for a location, you need business coaching and all that good stuff. We're going to talk about that on the on the other side. But before I do that, let's go ahead and get on with our horoscopes. And guess what today is, y'all? Today is National Cheesecake Day. Now, here's the thing. I'm not telling you to eat a whole lot of cheesecake. I'm just telling you it's National Cheesecake Day. I got to tell y'all this real quick, though. So, y'all know I went to the ranch this past weekend, and um, I rode the horse and all that good stuff. Well, I, I actually went to a, a restaurant in Madison called The Chop House. It was really good, and they had some really good cheesecake. So, yeah, I know for a fact that if you go to Barnes & Noble over in Snellville, they have really good cheesecake at that. I think they get that cheesecake from the Cheesecake Factory. So anyway, go on by there. Get you a slice. Don't get two. Get one. Enjoy because it's National Cheesecake Day. So I got a great guest for you today. But before I get to my guest, I'm going to go ahead and give you your horoscopes. Brought to you by Noted Astrologer Michael Thyssen. Today is July the 30th. Listen, we are almost at the end of this month. We, this month is almost done. and But um, that's okay. That's a good thing. All right, we're going to kick it off like we always do, and that is with Aries. Residential moves will be hectic and may be unsatisfactory. Try to join groups of interest such as ballroom dance classes or perhaps an internet organization. Avoid lovers who already have a relationship, even if, even if it's a bad one. All right, so listen, you got a lot going on here, Aries. Avoid the lover with the relationship. That's a mess. Don't get involved with that. And try ballroom dancing. I don't know how much you're going to like ballroom dancing, but that's what your signs are saying today. Your stars are saying go do some ballroom dancing or do something on the internet. There's a lot of stuff to do on the internet right now. Everything is virtual. I did a four-hour conference yesterday, podcast conference on the internet with 227 people in a Zoom room. It was great, though. It was a great conference. Taurus. You must deal with an emotional problem with your loved one that you have been avoiding for some time now. You need to concentrate on the areas where you can make a difference. Social activities will be satisfying. All right, listen here, Tari. Social activities probably will be satisfying. Remember, put the mask on. Social distance. I know. We all want to get outside. I get it. I was on a horse this weekend. It was great. I understand. Gemini, do not jump to conclusions concerning your romantic partner. You can look around for the right place and enlist some of your friends to help you move. Someone you live with will get angry if you are neglecting your duties. Look, take care of yourself at home because you're about to piss some people off, Gemini. So don't neglect your duties if you want to keep a happy home. That's all I'm saying. Cancer, take time to help children with projects that may be too hard for them to do on their own. Don't be too pushy or demanding, or you may find yourself alone by yourself. One is the loneliest number in the world, Jim Cancer, so don't push. Don't be too pushy. Try to convince a good friend to take a holiday with you. I know, man. Everybody, I was talking to somebody yesterday. It was a husband and wife team. They have a podcast called People Think About It, and they got a great little space over in um, in Lawrence and Duluth. And she was like, I just need to go on a vacation. I was like, I, girl, I know. Need to go on to the ranch. It's a, it's a lot of air, a lot of space, a lot of land. It was like 50 acres. Go on over to Madison to the ranch. Leo, you can't get ready to celebrate your new direction. You can get ready to celebrate your new direction. Relatives will be cordial. Listen, but don't make any rash decisions. Just listen. Close your mouth, Leo. Don't talk too much. Now's the time to listen so you can make the right decision, not the rash decisions. All right? All right. Virgo, your persuasive nature will win the heart of someone you've been had an eye on. Mm. Don't let criticisms upset you. Hassles will delay your plans. Your health may have suffered due to neglect or abuse. Listen here, Virgo, we only get one life. You got to take care of yourself. Stop playing around. Take care of yourself. Don't neglect yourself. All right? All right. Listen, I'm going to go to a song. I'll be right back after the song to give you more of the hearts. Goes brought to you by Noted Astrologer Michael Thyssen. You're listening to the Good Morning Gwinnett Show. Stay tuned.
Welcome back, welcome back. You're listening to the Good Morning Gwinnett Show. It's your girl, Audrey Bell Kearney, giving you the daily horoscopes brought to you by Nota Astrologer Micah Thyssen. And we're going to pick it up with Libra. Your diplomacy will be utmost of the utmost importance today. Get involved in groups that are creative in nature. You can accomplish a great deal. Y'all know I'm always trying to be creative. I picked up some chairs. We're going to repost them. I watched flea market flip, so I'll, get, I'll be all inspired. I'm not that very, I'm not creative like that though, for real, but I'm trying, I'm trying. Scorpio, you will be able to communicate well today. You may be looking through the rose-colored glasses. Try to keep ahead, keep your head out of the game. All right. Okay. All right. I don't know why you need to do that today, but do it. Listen, that's what your stars are saying, Scorpio. Sagittarius, move into a leadership position if you determine to do so. Get involved in volunteer work that will bring you satisfaction, not an empty wallet. This is a great day for a family outing or just a drive. Go just for the drive. Take the family with you. Listen, especially down in Georgia, just go down. Listen, go down Rosebud. Just drive Rosebud. It's like driving in the country. I love it. I do it a lot, actually. When I got to think, I go drive down Rosebud, drive me all the way to Conyers. It's just winding roads. Love it. Capricorn, you will meet a person who may turn out to be more than just a friend. Cutbacks at work will be a cause for worry. There may be opportunities to attend social functions that are linked to work. So if they're cutting back at work, you may want to go to that social function because you may find a new job. That happened to me one time. I went to a Toastmasters meeting and found the job. I became a job coach with the Jersey City Department of Training and Development. And I I went to Toastmasters, y'all. You, I, you know, I used to talk about that all the time. Check out Toastmasters. You never know who you're going to meet. I left my job because they gave me a, a ten thousand dollar raise to go work as a job coach. I gotta tell y'all though, that was the most stressful job I ever had in my life. Yes, for real. More money, more headaches. Yes, Aquarius. Secret enemies will be eager to spread rumors about you. Your flair for the dramatic appeal will unleash itself on at social functions. Efforts made to improve yourself will turn out great to your satisfaction. Okay. Anytime you can be a better you, be a better you. So today, Aquarius, you're going to work on yourself. It's going to turn out great for you. It's going to be your set to your satisfaction. Great thing. And my fellow fish Pisces, good day for romance. Ah, sounds good, don't it, fish? Take the whole family and make it an enjoyable outing. Avoid confrontations with coworkers who aren't pulling their weight. All right, fish, I don't know about you, but I don't have no coworkers. For those of you who have coworkers, yeah, avoid the confrontations. You know, everything I pretty much read said go out and do something today. Here's the thing. Go out, be social, be safe. Be social, but be safe, y'all. Right? All right. All right, so listen, that's all the horoscopes I got for you today. I'll be back again on Monday at 10 a.m. to bring you more of the horoscopes right here on the Good Morning Gwinnett Show. But now we're going to get on with our guest. So my guest today is Mr. Mark Farmer. He is an economic development manager for the county of Gwinnett. He's over the small business and entrepreneur side of uh, of the economic development. I'm excited to have him. We've been trying to have this conversation now for about two years, and um, we have finally got the chance to do this. So um, without further ado, welcome to the show, Mark. Hi, Audrey. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. You're welcome. You're welcome. So so tell people a little bit, because I know in your department there, I met Chantel. She and I have had some conversation. Never met Roman. Um, and so you, all of you guys are economic development, but can you break down what each, each person does, the responsibility for each of you in that department? Um, sure. I'd be happy to. So as you say, we have three people, Chantel Wilson, Roman Dakare, and myself, and we all do a lot of things and some of our duties overlap a little bit, but in general, it breaks down like this. Um, Chantel is our business outreach person. Her job is to continuously reach out to uh, businesses in Gwinnett, generally medium-sized to large-sized businesses, uh, find out what their needs are, tell them about county services and resources and other uh, resources in the region. Um, she also puts together a program that's become very popular called Coffee and Conversation. Uh, she started this about three years ago. And, of course, in normal times, it's uh, a face-to-face meeting. And what we do is we invite businesses in to meet with Uh, county department heads. So uh, instead of if you're a business and you have a question about, say, transportation or water or police or fire uh, or whatever it may be, you could uh, sign up to come to a coffee and conversation gathering and you can walk right up to uh, the head of that department or a deputy in that department and ask them questions directly. 
So it's been a very popular program. Uh, obviously, since COVID-19 came along, it's been a virtual uh, meeting, and Chantel has pivoted to that very successfully. And uh, typically, uh, the, the gatherings are uh, maybe three to four per year, uh, but I think she's now up to at least five or six during the COVID period virtual. Uh, so if people are interested in that, they can go to the county website, GwinnettCounty.com, uh, click on the drop down menu under departments and go to economic development and you'll see a page there for coffee and conversation and they can uh, sign up to receive notifications about it. Um, so that's, uh, again, we all do a lot of things. Chantel does much mm -hmm. more than all that, but in general, she's our liaison with uh, the business community of medium and larger businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, Roman um, works with businesses for uh, relocation assistance, expansion assistance. So if uh, a company is looking to create a new office or a factory or a warehouse or some other kind of establishment in Gwinnett County, uh, they're somewhere else and they want to come into Gwinnett County either as a move or an expansion, um, Roman is the guy to talk to there. Uh, he also works with uh, developers who may want to look at some piece of land uh, in an unincorporated Gwinnett to um, perhaps build something or renovate something, uh, he can provide assistance on that. Um, and then another uh, job that Roman has, a little bit more behind the scenes, it's internal, but it's uh, very valuable and critical actually to what we do, is financial analysis. So if um, we are contemplating some uh, action or activity or, or those relocations, expansions, redevelopments we were talking about, uh, Roman can do, he's a real numbers guy, he can do financial analysis on the uh, impact of that activity uh, for county decision-making purposes. Okay. Um, and then my role is uh, with small business. Mm -hmm. And um, that entails a number of things. Um, I get calls from entrepreneurs and small business who may have any number of needs, and uh, I'll have a conversation with them and find out what they need. And if I'm not able to help them directly, uh, I've been doing this sort of thing in Gwinnett now for about a decade. Uh, I used to be over uh, in Partnership Gwinnett, which is the Economic Development Division of the Gwinnett Chamber. Mm -hmm. um, I, was there about, I was there about 10 years. I've been now with the county for about three years. Uh, well, actually three and a half now. Um, and so over that time, I've developed quite an extensive contact list of uh, partners and resources in the in the region that can help small business. So if they call me, I uh, my role is to help run down whatever help they need. Um, also, over the past several months, I'm um, actually really more like a year and a half to two years, we've had in development a Gwinnett Entrepreneur Center, and that uh, activity, that project has picked up a little steam recently. Uh, we just uh, um, last week, in fact the County Board of Commissioners approved a contract for uh, renovations on a building that we will be turning into an entrepreneur center. Uh, the building itself is in Lawrenceville. It's mm -hmm. about two blocks off the town square and uh, uh, renovations should start soon. And we're on a pace to finish the building, complete the renovations by the end of the year. And so we should be able to start programming in the first quarter of um, 2021. Um, we will have to uh, adjust what we were going to do because mm -hmm. of uh, the COVID crisis, but we're we're working on planning for that now. So, so, um, so Mark, before, before we get into that part, I want to go back for a second because I want to talk about small businesses because um, sure, I think a lot I think a lot of people don't know. Like you said, small businesses mean different things to different people, and I'm working with um candidate Derek J. Wilson, who's running for commissioner for Derek three De District three. On a um, on an initiative that he has called the micro uh, micro business alliance, and because I feel like there's a difference between micro businesses and small businesses. When I think about small businesses, I still think of the business that has like employees, you know, maybe five, ten employees or more. And when I think of a micro business, I think of the solopreneur, um, you know, the person that's you know got some con some independent contractors. Can you can you kind of tell the listeners what's the difference between a small what what is a small business as it pertains to uh, economic development in Gwinnett County and a micro business. Cause I don't, I've never heard of micro business before, but I kind of can see why it would be called a micro business. Uh, 
Yes, that, and that's a great question, and that comes up all the time. It's it's a conversation uh, I've had for a number of years, and will probably will continue to have on an ongoing basis. Because there's no universally accepted definition of what is a small business or a micro business, but it, it sort of breaks like this. Um, there actually are some definitions if you look at the uh, small the federal small business administration for the purposes of the programs and support they offer. In general, they call anything that is 500 employees or fewer a small business. Mm-hmm. Now, there are a few exceptions. There are some subsectors, sub-subsectors they define where that number could float a little bit. But just as a general rule of thumb, the Small Business Administration calls anything under 500 employees a small business. Now, if you ask the average person on the street, would you think of a business with 475 employees as a small business? Right. A lot of people say, no, that's a huge business. Mm-hmm. Um, and relative to a micro business or um, uh, a sole proprietor, it certainly is huge, but relative to some of these, um, you know, large corporations that have thousands or tens of thousands of employees, a company with 475 employees is small. And if you were to ask maybe a CEO of a company with 450 employees or 475 employees, are we small? They they would a lot of them would tell you yes we're we are a very small operation mm-hmm. uh, 450 475 employees something in that range is not that huge, um, but um, then within say the field of economic development it gets even a little more fuzzy because take it back to what I was describing a moment ago with uh, the role of uh, the team that we have uh, in economic development. So uh, I mentioned that Chantel does outreach with medium and larger businesses. Mm-hmm. There's no hard and fast dividing line between when I work with a business and when Chantel works with the business. And sometimes we, she and I may actually, mm-hmm. what it really comes down to then is not how many employees they have, but what are their needs. Mm-hmm. And so if they come to us with a particular request or a particular problem or challenge, and it's something that I can help with, then irrespective of how many employees they have, then I'm going to help them. Mm-hmm. If they come to us and whatever they need falls more within the toolbox that Chantel has that she's built up over years, then she's going to help. And then again, like I say, sometimes maybe they have more than one issue and Chantel and I will confer and work together and bring our basket of resources, both of our toolboxes together to, to help the business bottom line is that the business get help. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And so at that point, we don't, we don't worry so much about um, how many employees the company has, but is what do they need and what can we do for them? Okay. Okay. So now with the entrepreneur center, I know one of you, one of the things I've read about the, in an article I read was that the center is really geared towards helping a low income um, family you know, start and grow these businesses. And so is it a program in place that's going to say, you know what, it's going to be a six week program and this is how you're going to get through. I used to, there was a company in, um, in New York and I talk about this a lot because I felt like this was a great plan. There was a company in New York. I forgot the organization, but the, the project was called project enterprise. And this was some years ago. What they did was they, they came together, they brought entrepreneurs together. It was a six week program. They all, a cohort went through the program. When they graduated the program, they were able to get access to capital. But here, here was the catch. Everybody in the group was responsible for everybody else paying back the capital. So if you got capital, I got capital, we were all responsible for each other paying back the capital. So is there a program that's going to be in place that's going to walk the entrepreneur through, you know, startup, or is it going to be kind of set up like the SBDC? I was a I was a um, consultant for Rutgers Small Business Development Center, and people would come in, and they would come in with ideas. And it used to be funny, Mark, because people would come in. Like I had one lady came in. She wanted to make cupcakes, and I said to her, well, do you know how to bake? And she said, no. I'm like, okay, so that might be the first place to start. <laughs> so is it going to be set up? You know what I mean? Like she wants to bake cupcakes. She don't know how to bake. Is it going to be set up the way SBDC is set up, or is it going to be set up more in a fashion where there's a program that they're going to go through for a certain amount of time um, and then come out and you know have everything ready to go and to launch? I would say that it's going to be some of all of the above okay. um, with, with, with some variations. So we want to create a big tent, uh, mm-hmm. so to speak, meaning I want to have some kind of offering for every small business in Gwinnett. Now, mm-hmm. we won't be able to be everything to everybody, mm-hmm. but I, I would love 
uh, for us to uh, be the entity that small businesses, entrepreneurs, startup, uh, startup companies would think of if they're starting up in Gwinnett or they're a small business and they have an issue or a question or they're small business looking to grow and they, they don't already know where to turn, um, I would love for us to be the first place they turn. Mm-hmm. And we, if we don't offer something, we will be a portal to other services and we'll connect them up with um, regional partners who mm-hmm. can provide services. And that might be the SBDC, it might be SCORE, uh, it might be the organization ACE, which access to capital for entrepreneurs, if you're familiar with them. They're a long-time partner. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are plenty of others uh, that are available, the Chamber, um, Small Business Administration, and on and on. We want to we build a rich set of resources for those companies. Okay. So um, that could be for any, any entrepreneur in, the, in Gwinnett. And we would have – and it might involve – one-on-one coaching with SBDC or SCORE will provide mentoring space, so offices where conference rooms where um, an SBDC mentor could come in, sit with an entrepreneur, and have a coaching meeting with them. Um, Also, we're going to have a training room, and so we offer classes and workshops there. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, you mentioned a program. We also want to do that. We are actually going to have workspace for startups and small companies okay and that we will have some private offices we will also have some open co-working space we will have an application process Um, startups and small businesses in Gwinnett can apply to basically have their our location be the residence of their business it will be their business office but what we will be looking for uh, are companies that are either startup looking to launch or small businesses who've maybe been around for a few years but are facing a growth phase and could use some help through that. When they come to us, we will take a look at them. We will look at their application. We will interview them and see if they are a fit. And a fit would be, can we offer something that's going to help them through that launch or growth phase? Mm-hmm. And they would sign a membership agreement. It'll be a membership model, just like you know, if you're a membership at a health club mm-hmm. and you get a locker or whatever and use the facilities, it would be a similar concept. You would get an office or a co-working desk, but you would also have attached to your membership agreement a startup or growth plan. Mm-hmm. And so it would have a series of milestones that you would have to meet while you were with us. Mm-hmm. And it would be tailored and customized to your particular business situation. And so if you come in with us as a member, you would be with us for a period of time. And there, it would not be a set period of time. We don't want to lock somebody into um, any sort of preconceived notion of what the time should be. We will look at them and assess them. And essentially, uh, when we think they're ready to leave the nest and they've fulfilled the milestones on their startup or growth, plan, uh, and we feel like they are stable enough to leave the Entrepreneur Center, then we would graduate them out and make room for the next company to come in. Um, now, you mentioned low income. Mm-hmm. We, uh, we wanted to work with uh, low income founder owners, and we've received some grant money to help us with that. Okay. And it's from, it's a CDBG uh, grant, Community Development Block Grant, mm-hmm. which is a from um, the federal HUD department. And uh, they have uh, formulas and so forth as to how you identify low to moderate income. So as we get closer to opening and start recruiting members, we'll be looking at those formulas and recruiting uh, low to moderate income founder owners from uh, Gwinnett to come in and be some of our membership. Is there some type of... um minority initiative attached to that as well or is this based we on certainly income? will be well it's a, in, in terms of minority or a, you know it, from that perspective the, the entrepreneur center of course is open to everyone mm-hmm. but we want to we want to make our membership reflective of the diverse community that is the Gwinnett you know mm-hmm. Gwinnett is one of the most diverse communities uh, in the country certainly in the southeast mm-hmm. And we are going to actively recruit minority entrepreneurs. Uh, We want that mix of 
perspective, diversity, uh, point of view, um, input, et cetera. And so we, we will certainly uh, promote work with regional partners um, to, to actively recruit minority entrepreneurs as well. So now, Mark, you talked about the, the space that they'll be able to sign a contract, get a membership. What, are, are there fees attached to the membership? Because I know I've been a part of some co-working spaces, and there are some fees. And, you know, sometimes as a, as a new entrepreneur, you can't afford certain things. So are there fees attached to the memberships? And if there are, what are they? Uh, there will be fees. We do not have the exact numbers worked out yet. Uh, we were waiting until we got closer to opening because the co-working uh, world is very dynamic and it has seen a lot of ups and downs over the past few years. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so rather than attaching exact numbers that we would probably later have to change anyway, mm-hmm. uh, we were we were waiting until we got closer to opening to publish any sort of cost for um, uh, being a member. And it's it's a very good thing that we did because now who knows what the COVID situation is going to do to the market. So it's going to be even more volatile. Mm-hmm. So we won't uh, we'll probably be a, a little while yet before we actually post on our website the numbers to become a member because it's just too fluid right now. Anything we put down now is highly subject to change later. Uh, however, we do have some sense of the categories, mm-hmm. and I can share that with you. Please do. Bit. First of all, we would uh, – we would divide it into uh, low to moderate income founder owners and non low to moderate income founder owners. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to work with someone from a household that is low to moderate income, we want to be responsive to that and set a figure that is below the rate of, of folks who don't fall into that area. Mm -hmm. Um, Another thing we may do is uh, a lot of, uh, Facilities like this and centers like this uh, will will start a new member at a lower rate, and then every few months raise their rate just a little bit. Mm-hmm. And as you say, when you start up, you don't have a lot of money, and so you would maybe the first six months the rate is whatever it is, and then we go up a little percentage for six months to a year, and then go up a little bit more for a year to a year and six months. What we're trying to do with that process is get the entrepreneur ready to leave the entrepreneur center and go out into the market mm-hmm. where the price is going to be set by the market. So if we, if we charge them nothing by, when they graduate out from our center and go out into the market, that line item on their financial statements would, go, would be zero and then it would suddenly jump to whatever the market rate is and might be too much a shock to their business plan. So what we would be, it's, it's it, almost the the um, the fee, the membership fee, would, is almost more for them than it is for us. Um, and uh, but obviously it also helps us run the program. Um, so th- that would be something we're experimenting well as a, as a gradual increase to get them ready for the market when they graduate out. But then in terms of what the actual categories that we would offer. We have, we're going to have a couple of two-person offices. Mm-hmm. That would be our highest rate. We have, we have a handful of one-person offices, so mm-hmm. that would be a little less than the two-person office. Mm-hmm. Then we have co-working desks. That would be a little less still than the, an office. And then we're also experimenting with the idea of what we're calling a mobile membership, mm-hmm. where there may be some businesses that we could uh, work with that would be uh, suitable for uh, a membership, but they don't have actual workspace in our facility. So they don't have an office or a co-working space. Mm-hmm. Maybe they're a home-based business, mm-hmm. but they could benefit from some of our program offerings. And maybe what they get out of that is conference uh, room, time, and probably some other services. So we would call that a mobile membership. Mm-hmm. Uh, they could come in, avail themselves of training, coaching. Uh, they could book a conference room if they want to meet with a customer that sort of thing. And we could probably come up with some other um, service offerings that maybe perhaps um, a mailbox, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. But some, some home-based businesses, um, you know, they have to use their home address as their business address. And it, it might be for a mobile membership, a good idea to have uh, a mailbox available for them. Right. 
Now, let me ask you a quick question because I, you know, I've, 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 I've gone through an accelerator, but I know there are incubators, accelerators, um, all kinds of startup um, organizations out here. So if someone comes into the, the Gwinnett Entrepreneurs uh, Center and they launch a business, is the business solely owned by them or would the Gwinnett uh, Entrepreneurs Center take a portion as equity in their company? We, we would not take a portion. That's, okay. um, you know, you see that a lot with private incubators. Mm-hmm. And, of course, we're, we're uh, county government sponsored, and so we would not take an equity position in the businesses. Um, this is all about uh, – Gwinnett County is doing this as a service to the entrepreneur community, mm-hmm. but it's also an economic development investment. Um, you know, we, when we're looking for members, what we're going to be looking for is businesses, whether they're startup or whether they're small businesses, we're going to be looking for growth potential. Mm-hmm. And because what we want is to graduate out businesses that are equipped to handle those fragile periods of startup and growth, you know, that that can kill a business. A lot of startup businesses don't make it. A lot of businesses that enter a growth phase can't handle it and uh, struggle or even fail. Um, and so if we can educate them, connect them to resources that increase the likelihood that they're going to succeed, then this center will, by extension, contribute more successful businesses to the community and enrich and support the overall business climate in Gwinnett. And so they will go out and lease commercial space, which is a good economic development um, thing to happen, and very importantly, hire people. Mm-hmm. So th- this is part of the mission of this center is a long range economic development strategy. Now let me ask you this because I, I I hear the word growth a lot because I'm always out there with my with my you know my ear to the ground listening for opportunities and business and things like that. A lot of times when I hear the word growth, it's always attack, attached to technology based companies. Um, so and that, and that, and that kind of pushes the small you know, small business pop mom and pop shops out of the way, out of the way, because now, you know, it's like, okay, we're looking for growth companies. Does that mean the same thing when it comes to what, what you're talking about? When you say growth, are you saying somebody in the tech space, the medical space, the energy space, or can it be a cupcake company? It could absolutely be a cupcake company. Um, we're not looking just at technology. Mm-hmm. Um, and th- thank you for a very astute question. That hits on something that it, you're absolutely right, is sort of 